It's one of the big driving factors for why I prep is that, you know, it's one thing to let yourself down and be like, ah, oh, I should have prepped, you know, and now I didn't and I, I'm hungry. Or, you know, I, I didn't and now I've got this skin infection. It's a whole other thing if like you see this thing happening to your kid. And, you know, as a parent myself, I feel like that would be a really, really awful situation to be in, to know that my, my kid has an infection of some sort and that infection is eating him alive and there's nothing I can do about it. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. In this video, we're gonna talk about Jace Medical. Jace Medical is a company that you can engage to send you antibiotics without a prescription for emergency situations. We're gonna talk about whether it's worth it because there's a fair amount of uh, cost associated with buying antibiotics that you may hopefully never need in your life. And we're first gonna talk about why is this specific video worth watching? Because I know there've been a lot of prepping channels who have done videos about Jace Medical uh, because their offerings are a little bit new. Uh, it, it's something that we haven't really had access to before. And uh, you know, so why is this video that I'm doing uh, potentially worth your time to watch if you've watched ones from uh, you know other prepping channels? Well, the simplest way to put that is that I personally am someone who has done a fair bit of use of antibiotics without a prescription. And by that, I don't mean, you know, I get a paper cut. Oh, I, want, I need an antibiotic. Oh, I stub my toe. Oh, I need an antibiotic. Antibiotics are something that you want to use very judiciously. That means you don't want to use them for every little thing. And they have a specific purpose for certain things where they're very helpful. And there are other situations that they can't help you with one bit. So you want to know what you're using them for and you want to use them at appropriate times. And I have had a lot of appropriate situations where it has come up where I have self-medicated without a prescription using antibiotics. And I've not just done that with human antibiotics, I've also done that with over-the-counter fish uh, animal antibiotics, and I've had very successful uh, experiences with that. Antibiotics are really helpful, they're really useful for the things that they're designed for, uh, and they're a great thing to have in your prepping pantry. Because if you're ever in a situation where you have an illness or some kind of a situation where antibiotics are the best thing for it, there's almost nothing else for it. Uh, you know, you really need an antibiotic to clear that kind of thing up. If you remember the bubonic plague back during the Middle Ages, it killed, I think, two thirds of all the people in, that, uh, in the population where it was ripping through. Had they had antibiotics, it probably wouldn't have killed hardly anyone. Antibiotics are super powerful, and for the right uh, application, they are really the only thing that you can use. So I think, personally, they're worth having in your pantry, even though there's some costs associated with it. With all that said, let's talk about what you actually get if you buy one of these Jace cases. I want to address it kind of from the, the other side, which is, you know, what are the problems that you can solve by having some of the uh, antibiotics that are in this case. But before we get in, I am gonna list off what they are for you so that if you are familiar with some of these things, you can kind of cost shop and compare and you know, see whether you're getting uh, you know, the best value uh, you know, for your money. Again, I mentioned that this is pretty cost competitive. I've bought a lot of fish antibiotics uh, in the past and fish antibiotics, uh, you know, they're not cheap. It costs a fair bit of money to get fish antibiotics. So these human antibiotics that you get from, uh, you know, this, this pharmacy being prescribed for emergency use are very cost competitive as compared to going to the pet store, essentially, and getting fish antibiotics. Though I wouldn't say that they're necessarily any more uh, appropriate or effective because I've used a lot of fish antibiotics and I've never had a problem with them. So the antibiotics that you get in this case are amoxicillin, that's something that I've personally used, azithromycin, uh, I have not fortunately had to use azithromycin, but we're going to talk about some of the uses of that. Cipro, uh, ciprofloxacin uh, is another uh, me uh, medication that's in here, and I fortunately have not needed to use ciprofloxacin because uh, some of the issues that you would be addressing with ciprofloxacin are pretty serious. So, uh, you know, ciprofloxacin is one of those things, it's, it's called cipro for short, why don't we call it cipro for the rest of the video. Uh, ciprofloxacin is one of those things that if you have an ailment where you need cipro, you know, you'll be really glad that you had it. Doxycycline, I've used on a number of occasions. That's kind of, uh, you know, that's a baseline uh, kind of um, antibiotic that you can use for a lot of things, specifically Lyme disease, I'd use that for. And uh, this one, uh, the last one, it begins with M, and to be honest, I'm, I'm not that familiar with it other than I know that it's used for athlete's foot, it's used for vaginal infections, um, you know, kind of like yeast infections, things like that. It's a uh, 
I'm, I'm just gonna like phonetically say it, metronidazole or something like that. I've actually used it for athlete's foot in the in the past. Uh, that's something that you can actually get without a prescription. Uh, so the fact that you're getting it prescriptions free here, it's not a lot of value added in that respect because you can get um, you can get that particular medication, uh, you know, just generally without a prescription anyway. Uh, but uh, it, it is in this uh, this uh, packet here. So what I want to talk about is uh, you know some of the situations that could come up where you would need an antibiotic. I had treated uh, strep throat. In the past, uh, the a proper antibiotic for strep throat generally uh, is going to be—it's um, not in this, but they have an alternative to it. Uh, would be um, penicillin. Uh, would be something you might use for strep throat. What they have uh, is something that is uh, an alternative to penicillin because a lot of people are allergic to penicillin. Uh, what they have in here is amoxicillin, and you can use that for strep throat. You can also use that for other things. Um, amoxicillin can be used for bite wounds, uh, pneumonia, specifically bacterial pneumonia, uh, and um, sinusitis, which is a, like a nasal infection. I've also used, uh, like I mentioned, doxycycline a lot, and uh, doxycycline is something that I use. You know, here in the Northeast, we have a lot of ticks. Uh, we have a lot of ticks here in the Northeast. Uh, we invented uh, Lyme disease here up in New England, and I say that both uh, figuratively and literally. It did originate here, and there is some question as to whether or not it may have originated from a lab, sort of the situation similar uh, to that illness that went all over the world in that uh, pandemic sort of situation from uh, 2019, continuing on uh, you know, now through 2022, uh, you know, th where there were some questions as to whether or not that might have been lab-based uh, or whether that was a natural-based uh, uh, illness. The same kind of questions swirl around Lyme disease, and uh, we may or may not have invented it up here. Doxycycline is something that you can take both as a prophylactic against uh, uh, getting Lyme disease if you are bit by a tick and you suspect that it might have Lyme disease, or if you start developing Lyme symptoms, you can take a longer regimen of doxycycline. And we're not going to get into the specifics like, you know, how, you know, how much you should take or for how long. That's stuff that you can look up online. And we're going to talk a little bit about different books that you could get uh, that would help you with uh, those types of questions. Uh, but doxycycline is a really useful medication for, uh, for Lyme disease. Uh, they have uh, a nice book that comes with this. It actually is a pretty cool book with some information on the different medications that are in here. And they they also have a, a nice guide with uh, that's alphabetic, um, starting with anthrax. So that's why we're starting with anthrax first, because it's alphabetic, uh, starting with A. Uh, and the, uh, a couple of medications that can be used for anthrax are Cipro and doxycycline. Uh, I remember when there was an anthrax scare here in the United States. Uh, it was like just after 9/11, like people were sending anthrax through the mail. It kind of, that whole thing kind of fizzled out. But you know, Cipro was something that shot up in price when uh, when that was going on. Uh, another thing, uh, a bacterial vaginosis, that's a, you know, a vaginal yeast infection. That's that, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't pronounce this one, metronidazole or whatever. Uh, that is the thing that you can use for athlete's foot also. And that is something that is effective against a vaginal yeast infection. There are other ways of doing that, like uh, uh, with uh, some of the Sorry, I have a little bug in my throat here. Not a tick, thankfully. You know, there are uh, topical applications and things like that. And that would be something that I would suggest that you, if you have women in your group, in your family, uh, and you would like to protect them against possibly having a yeast infection during a SHTF event, I would suggest having, you know, some type of a, a yeast infection treatment uh, and, and just keep that in your pantry as well. Uh, a lot of those use this uh, particular medication. Uh, they also have uh, uh, medications here for, uh, bites, and they, they say both animal and human bites, you know, news alert, humans are animals. <laughs> Sorry to break it to you. So you, you really only have to say animal here. But from an animal bite, uh, they uh, suggest using amoxicillin or doxycycline for that. I mean, just uh, to kill the bacteria that might have been injected into the blood. For Giardia, uh, they talk about using the, <laughs> that, that antibiotic that begins with M again, the same one that's used for, uh, you know, vaginal yeast infections, metronidazole or whatever. Uh, for plague, uh, we mentioned, uh, <coughs> sorry, I got bugs. <coughs> I've got black flies flying around here and I'm inhaling them. Uh, for plague, I mentioned uh, during the Middle Ages, if people had had access to antibiotics, you know, a lot of people that were dying from the uh, plagues, you know, could have been saved and ciprofloxacin or just simply doxycycline could have been helpful for that. For pneumonia, and this is again, bacterial pneumonia, uh, they uh, suggest amoxicillin or azithromycin or doxycycline, all of which are in here. Uh, you can uh, treat sinusitis, uh, 
uh, sinusitis. A lot of these are hard to say. And again, that is an uh, uh, infection up in your nose. And an infection up in your nose, uh, you know, there's a couple different ways of treating that. You can do uh, salt water sprays is one way of, uh, you know, if you have a mild uh, nasal infection, uh, doing a, a, a saline spray can try to uh, get rid of it so you don't have to use the, the antibiotics. I always uh, suggest using antibiotics and, and doctors will tell you the same thing. Save antibiotics from when you absolutely need them. You know, try to uh, solve your issues in other ways if possible. Uh, but you know, when you need an antibiotic, you need an antibiotic. But to uh, try to treat a um, uh, not very advanced, like just beginning stages of a nasal infection, you can do, use a nasal spray. I would uh, you know, suggest starting with that. But um, if a nasal infection uh, continues and it gets severe, it can pass up into your brain. And I've known someone that went through that where the nasal infection passed through some of the tissues up into their brain and they were in big trouble. They ended up having to have parts of their brain removed, you know, brain surgery, and it was, it was a huge thing. Uh, you know, just from a simple nasal infection. So if you can stop a nasal, nasal infection early, nip it in the bud either with a saline spray, if it's that early, or, uh, you know, using a medication like amoxicillin, which is in this uh, pack, you know, you can prevent yourself from having to have brain surgery, or if you're in an SHGF situation and that's not available, dying. So uh, that gets to the value of these things. And, you know, I mentioned at the beginning, it's a fair bit of investment to buy one of these, uh, these cases, but if you get one of these issues and a lot of these issues can't be treated in other ways you know the world is such a better place now that we have antibiotics you know people used to die from paper cuts you know you could get a paper cut it gets infected with the wrong kind of bacteria there was a gentleman who was helping me during my homestead build uh, he was working on the concrete he got some kind of a scrape on his leg it got infected. It was a uh, antibiotic resistant strain of bacteria. I mean, you know, antibiotics aren't going to help you much with those, but he almost died. He had to have, uh, you know, huge chunks of his leg taken out. This stuff is really serious. So, you know, so first line of defense, try to keep yourself from getting scratched up in the first place. Use gloves, you know, wear appropriate clothing when you're doing work. Uh, second line of defense, you know, if you get a scratch, try to clean it out right away. I love, always love using Neosporin, which is a type of bacitracin. Uh, you know, that's not something in here, but that's something you can easily buy at a pharmacy. You know, treat your wounds, wash them with soap and water. I know, especially with guys, we're all like, ah, oh, I don't need to wash that out because my, my, my toughness will prevent that bacteria from multiplying in my blood. You know, toughness doesn't protect you from this stuff. First line of defense, gloves and clothing. Second line of defense, clean out your wounds. Third line of defense, have some way of treating an infection as early as possible. And if you can have this stuff in your pantry, that is the easiest way to do it. Because honest to God, I've never gotten a, uh, a bacterial infection during a, like an SHTF Teotihuacan end of the world event because I've never lived through one. But I always seem to get it on a holiday weekend or right before I'm going away on a trip or something like that, where I just don't have the time or the doctor's not in or something like that. I always seem to get these things at inconvenient times and having them in my pantry is just really convenient. You know, so that, that's one of the other big things about prepping and preparedness. You know, it's not always about just saving your life. Most of the time, it's just about conveniences and, you know, not having to do that emergency run out for flour because you have plenty of flour in your pantry or that emergency run out for amoxicillin. Okay, they talk about skin infections. That's that um, uh, cellulitis that I talked about, and they suggest doxycycline for that. That's what I ended up taking for mine. Cleared it up right away. They talk about traveler's diarrhea, which is diarrhea uh, not caused by your poor, awful American diet, <laughs> wink, wink, but caused by, uh, you know, actual uh, bacteria that you've gotten into your intestinal um, uh, tract, and they suggest azithromycin or ciprofloxacin for those. Um, uh, they talk about tetanus. Uh, tetanus is something that used to be a big problem for people. Now we have uh, tetanus uh, vaccines that we can take to prevent ourselves from getting tetanus. And, you know, a lot of you guys were watching my channel, uh, you know, during that illness that went all around the world and everybody was sticking things in their arm to try to get rid of it. If you've been watching my channel, you know that I didn't go that route and still 100% disease three, free of any disease over the past three years. We've been doing super awesome here just with masking, distancing, and just making smart choices. Um, but I, I'm not uh, someone who is uh, at all uh, averse to vaccines. I love vaccines. They, they're wonderful. They've changed our world in so many positive ways. Uh, the last time I actually got a tetanus booster to keep myself from getting tetanus, uh, I got it mixed with another vaccine. And then I found out later that that vaccine had been recalled for uh, uh, side effects. It had a lot of side effects. <laughs> so that was my last uh, interaction with the vaccine is that I got the tetanus booster that I wanted. And the other one was for like... 
I forget what it was for some kind of like uh, intestinal issue and they ended up recalling it because the, uh, the FDA was finding that there was an awful lot of side effects associated with it. Fortunately, I didn't get any of those, but you know, uh, we're all guinea pigs. <laughs> we're all guinea pigs when uh, you know we try that stuff out. But that doesn't mean that vaccines aren't something that are super helpful. And the ones that have been around for a long time where we have a long track record with lots of data points on them for many, many years, many, many decades, uh, I think they've proven themselves out. And those are very valuable. And tetanus is one of those. Uh, but if for some reason you aren't able to get a tetanus uh, vaccine and it's an emergency situation and you get a deep stab with you know metal or something like that and you feel uh, you know, nervous that you might have tetanus, you can take doxycycline or that antibiotic that begins with M that I can't, uh, you know, uh, for the life of me pronounce. Um, as I understand it, those are not the best ways of treating it. Really, the, the tetanus vaccine is really the best way to treat that. But if, you, you know, you have no other options, you can take, uh, you know, a couple of those antibiotics and, uh, you know, they're going to give you a better shot than nothing at all. Uh, they talk about tularemia and they suggest in here that tularemia is something that could be used as a bioterror weapon. I haven't ever really researched that very much, but I do know that tularemia is something that you can get outside of bioterror, uh, specifically from rabbits. Wild rabbits can carry tularemia. And I found this out once when I accidentally hit a rabbit on the road uh, while I was driving from one um, film shoot to another film shoot. It was on Halloween evening. A rabbit ran out in front of me. I always like screech on my brakes to not hit a squirrel, rabbits, sparrows, whatever. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm not trying to hit animals on the road, but this one was so close. I, I slammed into it and I felt bad leaving it on the side of the road. So I I picked it up with uh, some cardboard, put it in the back of my car thinking, well, it can die peacefully in the back of my car or something like that. And then as I was driving, I uh, realized that you could eat rabbit. So when I got to uh, the producer's house uh, of the person who was uh, you know, producing the film that I was gonna be shooting the next day, I was staying over at his house that evening. I said, hey, do you have any trash bags and some rubber gloves? Because, oh no, actually I didn't want ask for rubber gloves and that plays into the story. I ended up butchering the, butchering the rabbit on his back deck without him knowing about it. And I did it without rubber gloves. And I found out later that rubber gloves would have been a really, really good idea because if you butcher a rabbit, uh, without rubber gloves and you might have like an open wound or even a little scratch or just if you like have a, a little space under your fingernails where there's like any kind of live tissue under there uh, if the rabbit has tularemia you can get tularemia it's like a flesh-eating disease it's horrible um, you don't want to have that so first line of defense wear gloves if you're butchering rabbits second line of defense uh, you can take ciproflexacin or doxycycline which you can get in this case uh, the last thing they talk about here is urinary tract infections that you can take, uh, what did they say for, uh, Cipro, Cipro for a, U, a UTI. Uh, and uh, that brings me to the part of this video where we're going to talk about, like, is this stuff really worth it? Uh, I mentioned that it's several hundred dollars, and I really think that it is. Uh, I have purchased a lot of fish antibiotics in the past. I keep these things in my pantry. Fish antibiotics and human antibiotics, it's, in my opinion, in my experience, in my exper experimenting with this stuff, it's the same basic thing, or at least it, it appears to be to me. So it, re it really doesn't matter whether it's human stuff or, or fish stuff. Uh, you know, maybe the quality controls are different on one or the other. Um, I, I, I can't speak to that, but if you're going to a reputable company uh, who doesn't want your fish to die or doesn't want you to die, uh, Jace a Medical seems like a reputable company. I think this stuff is really, really important to have. And I, and I stock a lot of it in my pantry because of what I mentioned. If you're ever in a situation where you need an antibiotic and, and you, can't go to a, you can't go to a clinic, you, know, you can't go to a doctor, it's an emergency situation, you can get in real trouble. If your body or your child's body, you know, not to bring the, pull the child card in on it, but you know, as, as a parent myself, you know, it's one of the big things that, it's one of the big driving factors for why I prep is that you know, it's one thing to let yourself down and be like, ah, oh, I should have prepped, you know, and now I didn't and I, I'm hungry. Or, you know, I, I didn't and now I've got this skin infection. It's a whole other thing if, like, you see this thing happening to your kid. And, you know, as a parent myself, I feel like that would be a really, really awful situation to be in. To know that my, my kid has an infection of some sort and that infection is eating him alive and there's nothing I can do about it. So if you have the means to you know, get this kind of stuff. And it doesn't have to be from Jace Medical. I'd highly recommend Jace Medical. They're very cost competitive. Uh, you know, they give you a, a wide variety of stuff in there. Uh, their quality controls, uh, 
seem very legitimate. They've been tried by a lot of people and uh, I feel like you can trust what you're getting from Jace Medical. Uh, and you get this, this snappy little uh, container, although we're going to talk about later why you're not going to want to use that at all. Uh, you know, you get the nice little booklet with it and everything. Uh, even if you're not getting it from them, you know, whether you're getting fish antibiotics or whatever, I think this stuff is really important to get if you can afford it. Get your food first, get your water squared away first, get those kind of things that you know you're going to need. You know you're going to need food, you know you're going to need water. But unfortunately, you're really likely, especially in an emergency situation, to need medication. And I know I personally have used antibiotics a number of times in the past, and they have, you know, if I didn't have them, they've saved my life. So if you have the extra ability to buy this kind of stuff, there's a link down in the description below. Again, I, I do get kind of a kickback from that. I, I, it's not possible for me to give you a link that doesn't give me a kickback. Although I guess if you just go to jacemedical.com and you don't go through the link, you'll pay the same amount, but it doesn't doesn't benefit me any. So if you think what I've said is really uh, wise and you agree with it and you want to go to Jace Medical and get their material, but uh, you don't want to, you don't want me to get any kind of like a residual from it. Uh, if that, if that works, that, I'm fine with that. You know, uh, just go to jacemedical.com and you can uh, do that. If you uh, want to help this channel at the same time and not pay a penny more for anything that you're getting, you can do, uh, go down to the link below and, uh, and click through that way. But I highly recommend that you, you do it because I've used them a number of times in the past. And you know, God, if I was ever in a situation where my kid needed an antibiotic, um, you know, there's nothing else for it. So if you go and you do that, you know, uh, what's the next step? I mentioned that, it, you know, if you get this thing, the first thing you want to do is get rid of this case. It's a really nice case. I would keep the case. I wouldn't throw it out. It kind of zips open. They've got like all these little pockets for the medication. It's got this other, other little zipper thing here. Uh, you know, there's a little pocket in there. I guess that's where the, uh, the book had gone. It's a really nice case, but I wouldn't use it for the medication. I'll tell you why. If you're going to store this stuff for a while, a lot of antibiotics, they can be used well past their shelf life. And uh, there have been a lot of studies, specifically government and military studies, trying to figure out, like, you know, how can we not end up throwing out all these valuable resources? You know, as the U.S. government, we buy, you know, millions of dollars worth of these antibiotics. You know, uh, how long can we really keep these things without having to throw them out? The government has done a lot of these studies. Uh, one's called, the, I think it's called the SELP, S-E-L-P study, like Shelf Life Extension Program, S-L-E-P, or something like that, program. And, uh, you know, they found that a lot of this stuff can be used well past expiration. So how do you maximize that? Well, the best way to maximize it is to keep your medications, and this is pretty much all medications, in a cool, dry place. How's the best way to do that? Uh, well, the best way, I think, is to have a cool pantry and keep the stuff in there. Now, in, if you want to go a step beyond that, you won't want to keep the stuff dry. I mean, you don't want your whole pantry to be dry, but you want your medication to be you know, as dry as possible. So what I would suggest is get yourself a vacuum sealer. And what I do is I take each one of these uh, little medicine bottles. I take a small desiccant pack. Uh, I just order them from Amazon. I put one desiccant pack on the outside of the bottle. I guess you can put it on the inside, but it's just easier. I put it next to the bottle, put it in a bag, put it in the vacuum sealer, seal the thing up, and uh, then I date it. And I just date it with either you know, what the expiration date on the bottle says or when I sealed it up. Uh, that is gonna really help uh, make these antibiotics last a long, long time. Now, if you uh, look at the expiration dates on antibiotics, they, they oftentimes like say like one, two, three years is how, you know, how long they're good for. Uh, and if you're gonna spend several hundred dollars, you're like, Ugh, I don't know if I wanna spend several hundred dollars every year or every two years to you know uh you know throw out the old medication and then i gotta buy new medication well a lot of these medications are good for literally decades past the expiration date that they they can be used past so this is the kind of thing where you know maybe you buy it every 10 or 20 years so at that point it, it you know if you're if you're buying this kind of thing every 10 years it's like 20 bucks a year for the peace of mind that if you're ever in an emergency situation you know, you could do something for yourself, do something for your family. I would highly recommend it. And I've used them many times in the past. And if you have already squared away the food, the water, the other things you absolutely know you're gonna need, I'd really suggest investing in some of the stuff that you unfortunately probably are going to need, especially if there's ever some kind of an emergency situation. So I hope you find this uh, video helpful, even if you're not going with Jace Medical. There's lots of other places where you can get fish antibiotics and things, but the great thing about uh, Jace Medical is that uh, they give you a whole uh, 
uh, assortment of the things. The costs are really, uh, it, it's actually slightly less expensive than if you were gonna buy all the stuff as fish medication. And the absolute best thing about it, uh, of, of all the different things, is I get a small kickback <laughs> if you buy this stuff through Jace. But uh, you know, I wouldn't recommend it if I didn't believe in the company, if I didn't think you were getting the absolute best value that you could out of it, and if I didn't think this stuff is really necessary. And I've used it so many times in my own life, and I think that, man, food, water, medicine. There you go, right there. That's it. I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.